In today's video, we have the latest on guys like Jack Eichel. This situation has just gotten a whole lot messier. How could this possibly come to a resolution? We also got word on Phil Kessel in Arizona. The fact he definitely wants out of the desert. We have several more injury updates from NHL training camps and another signing and more. All that coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. Now, as I mentioned, we have a lot to talk about here today. Uh, we learned a lot about a lot more injuries today as well as training camps got a little bit further along. So we wanted to start off here with some injury updates. Now that we've seen teams hitting the ice and uh, coaches and GMs having a little bit more media availability, we have a little bit more of an idea where things are at with many players. For example, Nick Backstrom with the Washington Capitals is still out. Is going to be out for possibly uh, all or most of the rest of training camp. Uh, still battling a hip issue. Uh, we don't know exactly if he's going to be ready to start the regular season or not. Shouldn't drag on too long, but the fact is that he's just not quite fully recovered here as of yet, and they're hoping to get him sorted out here uh, in the not-too-distant future. Uh, we get a further update on Evgeny Melkin with the Pittsburgh Penguins. We know he had off-season surgery uh, to repair a knee injury. Of course, we also know that Sidney Crosby is going to be out for a little while as well. Uh, and we know that Malkin now is going to be out for about an additional two months. So he's likely not going to be back until sometime early to mid-December is likely what we're looking at for Pittsburgh. So that's certainly uh, not good news. I mean, it's not a shocker at this point to find out he's going to be out that long. We knew he wouldn't be ready to start the season. Uh, that's not uh, anything new. But exactly how much longer beyond the start of the season wasn't quite clear until recently here. So that's... Uh, that's not good. I would imagine with Brian Boyle being in the Penguins camp on a tryout that he likely will end up getting signed, get a contract because they, they really need somebody to play center ice there. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, Devon Taves in Colorado also uh, still recovering from the shoulder surgery that he had in the offseason. Not quite clear on exactly how long he's going to be out, uh, but he will likely miss uh, at least a little bit of time to start the regular season. So that's unfortunate for him. He certainly uh, played a huge role for the Avs after being acquired last year from the Islanders in an offseason trade. Essentially, the Islanders uh, kind of had to move him due to cap purposes. Colorado took advantage, and he turned out to be an excellent fit there, playing a real solid top four role, logging lots of minutes. So he will certainly be missed on that blue line. And the Montreal Canadiens actually had several injuries today come out of their training camp. Uh, announcements after players have taken all their physicals. Uh, Carey Price failed his physical. That one was not a surprise. We know he had offseason surgery, although the uh, estimated recovery, we should say, was that he would be ready about a week before the season started. So there was some that thought he actually could possibly pass the physical and be ready to go now of course the guys that are failing physicals it doesn't mean they can't skate or they're not doing things to get ready for the season it just means they're not with the main group of training camp a lot of these players are skating either on their own or in smaller groups or with conditioning coaches or whatever uh, in separate groups at different times. Uh, so Carey Price has been on the ice. He continues to rehab. Um, and right now they are aiming for him to be ready for the start of the season. And that's the hope. But you have to think with things pushed back here about a week or so, that you never know. Maybe things are not quite ready for the start of the year. But if it isn't, it won't be long. And he should be good to go. If not by the start, then shortly after. Of course, Paul Byron, not a big surprise there. Uh, he is going to be out until around December, January. Uh, obviously, with surgery that he had a much bigger surgery that we already knew about that as well. No big surprise there. Uh, Joel Edmondson is day-to-day, -day, so he's already dealing with something. Uh, Joel Teasdale, uh, who likely will play for their AHL team, he didn't pass, and so he's injured. And Mike Hoffman, actually. Hoffman, uh, the newly signed unrestricted free agent contract at they got this offseason, comes to camp, and fails his physical. Now, I know these things kind of sound bad that he showed up and failed his physical. It's not like they were, you know, gained a ton of weight and were massively out of shape or anything of that nature. Apparently, Hoffman had been skating like many players uh, in smaller groups, uh, trying to, you know, train and get ready uh, and suffered some sort of an injury in the very recent past. So he's uh, going to be out, probably missing the bulk of training camp, is what it sounds like. Um, hard to say, and he may not even be ready for the start. Of the regular season two it could be a little bit longer we also got confirmation on montreal we already kind of knew this but no big surprise they're they're definitely not naming a new captain uh shea weber is still technically the captain uh not expected to play at all this year of course uh when asked how they were going to 
handle the captaincy or who will be alternate captains or whatnot. Apparently, they're going to have a variety of players rotate. Uh, Brendan Gallagher will be the one consistent guy that uh, will wear an A all the time, and there will be other guys rotating through. Like we've seen Byron, for example, in the past be an alternate as well. But, of course, he's going to be out half the year, so they'll have to likely do something with uh, with his uh, letter that he normally wears too. So I'm not sure exactly who those players could be. I mean, you're looking at some guys like probably Petrie, uh, Tyler Toffoli, I believe, during media day was spotted with an A. Uh, you could even look to a guy, even like a Nick Suzuki. I wouldn't completely rule out Suzuki, maybe, but I know he's young, so hard to say exactly. But still, they have enough guys there that can handle that type of role that they'll uh, have a, a group of rotating alternate captains uh cal foot another guy is going to be out for an extended time uh the young defenseman with tampa was poised to grab a more regular spot given the changes they've had to make because of the cap and they're still going to be an excellent team but certainly open things up that he should have been able to grab a regular spot but instead he's going to miss all of training camp and about the first month of the season with a hand injury so that's a really big blow and unfortunate thing, more so for the player than the team. Obviously, the team will probably be fine. Uh, they're a pretty strong team overall, pretty deep. But for, for foot's sake, trying to get himself established, that's a, that's a real bummer. But hopefully he can make the most of it when he gets back in the playing. Uh, Travis Hamannick also absent from Vancouver Canucks camp. But uh, it's not believed to be injury-related, so you can probably read between the lines. And it sounds like, and people are speculating, that he may not be vaccinated and that the Canucks are working with him in uh, trying to give in some to, to get that done so he can come and not miss time. Obviously, to play in Canada, uh, they need to be vaccinated. So a Canadian team, to have an unvaccinated player is really going to be uh, a big blow because uh, they play... 41 home games and they play other games against other Canadian teams. You're looking at missing more than 50%. In some cases, you know, 60 to 65% of the season because they can't play in Canada. So there's really not much point in an unvaccinated player being on an NHL Canadian team because they're going to play so seldom. They're not, well, I mean, I guess it's not completely unreasonable, but they're going to lose a ton of money for starters because of the rules. Um, and the team, it's going to you know be difficult for them to work them in the lineup. So, obviously, uh, they would prefer to be 100%. To the best of our knowledge, I don't believe there's anybody else right now. I know Josh Archibald in Edmonton appears to not be vaccinated. Other than that, amongst the Canadian clubs as well, that's all we're aware of. We're not aware of anybody from between the Leafs, the Sens, uh, the Habs. Uh, I believe they've all reported the Jets. Uh, according to that, they're in flames. I believe they're all 100% to the best of my knowledge that I've seen so far anyway. So we'll have to see where that goes. And uh, Josh Archibald, basically, it sounds like if he's not vaccinated, they're likely going to put him with the American Hockey League team. It's not going to impact uh, the NHL roster and have somebody going in and out of the lineup and obviously going to impact his pay and all that. I don't know how that's all going to work, but uh, that sounds like that's what their plan is, but they're hoping he'll change his mind, but you can't force people since it's completely their choice and uh, what will be will be they'll have to deal with it in some capacity so uh, before we go into the remainder of the video though because I do want to talk a little bit about some trade scenarios we do have to acknowledge our channel sponsor Manscaped. Shelf Hockey is proud to be sponsored by Manscaped of course with Manscaped we have a special offer here for all top shelf hockey viewers where you can get 20% off in free shipping and all orders at manscaped.com now of course Manscaped just launched a brand new lawnmower 4.0 trimmer which is a fantastic product they've taken the level up here even again with the skin safe replaceable blades uh, they have it's waterproof it's wireless charging uh, has a travel lock on it uh, as well as a nice light so you don't miss what you're doing so certainly a terrific product now many people associate manscape with their trimmers which is certainly uh, kind of their top product but they do have a lot of other great options as well uh, including what they call the weed whacker which is another trimmer for your ears and nose and they have a variety of deodorants and sprays as well which also keep you fresh and are terrific as well so certainly manscape has a lot to offer and we certainly highly recommend all of their products so check out manscape.com and use promo code TSH for 20% off and free shipping. So thanks very much for watching our promotional content and do greatly appreciate it. I also want to take a quick moment and just give a shout out and a big thank you to all of our channel membership holders and everybody who's bought merchandise lately. Uh, the super thanks that you can do, like the tip jar basically. Uh, they've all been very much appreciated. Just want to say thank you to everybody in whatever way you've supported the channel. It's all very much appreciated. Now, 
with the trade talk today. I want to look first at Phil Kessel in Arizona. Uh, we do have a new word from Craig Morgan just kind of reconfirming the fact that Phil Kessel very much wants out of the desert as soon as possible uh, and that he likely will be traded sometime during the season. He's down to one year left on his deal. And for a guy like Kessel, who's got a ton of experience, multiple Stanley Cups to his name, at some points has been a really solid goal scorer, uh, teams can have him and only have to pay a portion of a million bucks. His contract is almost completely paid out. Most of his money this year was in the form of a signing bonus. So his salary is actually only $1 million. And of course, part of that could be paid depending on what time of year he actually ends up getting traded. So as far as real cash dollars go, very little money that way compared to a lot of other guys. Uh, but according to Craig Morgan, their main reason he wasn't traded in the offseason is that they tried. There just wasn't much of an appetite for uh, for him to be moved. Like Teams just really weren't interested. Uh, part of it had to do with, like they said, like the, the baggage that kind of comes with them. It sounds like teams might be leery. He does have a bit of a reputation for being difficult to coach and being a little, you know, having some drama with teammates. We've seen the relationship over the years when he was in Pittsburgh. I mean, for the most part, I think Phil's pretty well liked. Uh, I think he's been able, obviously, to make his career work and be a successful NHL player. But there have been some situations that we've heard of, but it sounds like he can be, you know, challenging to work with and he's not for everybody. And obviously teams are always leery about what they're bringing into their dressing room. Is he going to fit with that group? And they're going to want to disrupt the chemistry and all that. So, you know, we'll see what happens. But at the end of the day, if he's not traded by the time we get to the deadline, uh, you know, that's going to be a pretty attractive contract. It's very little cash. Uh, the cap hit, you know, obviously can be retained up to 50%. Um, so the, to bring that down some more, guy with tons of experience, Stanley Cups, you know, excellent goal scorer. Uh, you would think that somebody will grab him. But he very much wants out of Arizona as soon as possible. Does not want to be part of this rebuild. I'm sure the Coyotes would love to get something in return for him rather than just let him walk as a UFA next summer. So that will certainly be continued to be attempted to be honored here when the opportunity presents itself. Now, lastly, I want to talk quickly again on Jack Eichel. Now, we've already talked about Eichel today, uh, about the fact that he was stripped of his captaincy. Now, the big question is what comes Next, this player is in limbo. This is a messy, messy, ugly situation. It seems to keep finding ways to get worse. I know listening to Elliot Friedman earlier on NHL Network and reading uh, some different articles and uh, researching things through a lot of different experts on Twitter. What kind of comes next for the Eichel and the Sabres situation? So we know that he's failed his physical. We know that the Sabres have said that uh, at this point, they're, they're no longer able to say that rest can heal him so that he can be uh, cleared to play and be healthy. So they were they were uh, optimistic that surgery wouldn't be needed at all, which I find extremely hard to believe, but that's what they said. Uh, I'm, I personally think they, they should have realized that a few months ago if they hadn't by now. But anyway, that's another story. But at the same time here, uh, you know, can he just go have the surgery? That's the problem is in the CBA, it specifically states that the team has the right to make that decision. So, you know, they, they're paying you the money. They get to dictate the, uh, the remedies for your ailments, right? And so, like, the, the question's been posed. What if he just says, screw it? Like, this is my body, my choice. I'm just going to go have the surgery. Well, here's what can happen. Uh, for one, they could probably find a way to terminate the contract because of a breach. I don't see them doing that. They're, they can threaten that all they want, but they're not going to terminate the contract because if they terminate the contract, then he's not a signed asset, and that's not something you can trade, which means you get nothing in return. I, I know Buffalo's look bad here with this, but they, they wouldn't be that dumb, right? Like, they're not going to just let them become a free agent and walk. Like, to me, that makes absolutely no sense. Because if that happened, he wouldn't be tied to a team, go have his surgery, get healed up, sign as a free agent with whoever he wants, and boom, resume his career. For him, it would probably work out lovely. But I don't see Buffalo doing that. He still has a lot of term, a lot of money owing. And, you know, at the end of the day, he's going to want to get paid here. But the other thing that they could do is if they don't terminate the contract, they could suspend him and they can suspend him without pay. So if he gets the surgery that he wants, he's going to risk not getting paid. And he could be sitting home for God knows how long waiting for a trade for a team to not suspend him so that he can start getting his paychecks again. So at the end of the day, this is going to have major financial recourse. And if he's suspended and they're not paying them, they're really not going to be in a rush 
to pay him. Now, the other big factor here, though, is if this drags on long enough, I mean, it would have to get past next uh, into next offseason, then he has a known trade that kicks in after free agency starts. Then he can really back them further into a corner. Let's just say he can be like, listen, I want to go to Boston. That's the only team I'll wait for. Make it happen. Then the Bruins can swoop in and say, here's our offer. And Buffalo can either continue to hold an asset that they can't get any benefit from, or they could trade him for an extremely low value. Like either way, it's a bad, bad situation. So the most likely scenario, the fastest scenario here, and according to Elliot Friedman, which makes a total sense, is that a team would have to agree to make a trade with them as is, without the surgery, and then let them have the surgery. But the problem is, is at this point, the Sabres have drugged this on so long that he's likely going to be out half the season. If they made a deal this week and a team picked him up and said, okay, go get your surgery, he's probably going to be Christmas or more before you can even get him into the lineup. And that's assuming that this experimental surgery goes well and there's no complications and everything heals up right. I just don't see teams doing that, right? That's a big, risky move. I also can't help but wonder if the Sabres will attempt to suspend him for not agreeing to their um, surgery that they want. So obviously they have an injured player. They have the right to make the decision on what the recourse is to to remedy the situation. And if he refuses, I I wonder if they'll try to suspend him so that they don't have to pay him while he's sitting at home waiting for a trade. But that's just going to, you know, like I said, that's just going to make it worse. Like this relationship is already beyond repair. There's no doubt about that. Um, so there's no going back, but it just, it, it's getting uglier here by the day. Uh, I just, I don't know, but at, at the end of the day, Friedman says there were some teams that seemed like they would make a trade for Eichel without having the surgery with the agreement that they let him get it done. And that's really the only way that this gets any kind of a quick resolution, but will they do that? I mean, I, I don't know what teams they would be. Like I said, we know the usual suspects of teams that we've heard have been linked to him and keep checking in and keep trying to talk to the Sabres. Like we know Minnesota's been in there. We know the Rangers were in there. We know Vegas was in there. We know the Flames were in there. We know the Bruins had some discussions, but uh, don't really have a, a ton of the assets that they're looking for. Uh, you know, other teams as well, like the Ducks that were a big one. Uh, the Kings were win way, way early. I don't think they'd be in there now. But like, you know, still, like, is is that what's going to happen? It's really difficult to say. But to me, this has potential by the time the season starts to get even uglier. If they try to suspend him, then he's not getting paid. And then it's just going to, what what's going to happen next? Do you see any kind of solution where a team makes a trade for him? without the surgery and how long is this going to drag out and is it going to get uglier let me know your thoughts down below in the comments we'll discuss further if you're new to this channel make sure you subscribe and stick around we'll keep you up to date with all the latest news rumors and analysis on all 32 nhl teams thank you for watching and i'll catch you next time